Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to continue talking about the thigh by talking about the posterior compartment of the thigh, which comprises the hamstring muscle group, and you can see those muscles here in green. So the hamstring muscle group is composed of three muscles. We have the lateral biceps femoris muscle, then we have the two more medially placed muscles, those are semitendinosus and semimembranosus. And collectively, the hamstring muscle group is responsible for two main functions. That's knee flexion and then hip extension. Collectively, the hamstring muscle group is innervated by the sciatic nerve, and these muscles generally are going to have two functions. They're going to, one, flex the knee, and two, extend the hip. Now, just by looking at this, you ought to be able to guess that these muscles, or at least most of them, are two joint muscles because they have one action at the knee and a second action at the hip. And that's actually true. The hamstrings overall are two joint muscles. They cross the hip joint and the knee joint. There is one exception that we'll see in the coming slides. So we've got three hamstring muscles. We have the biceps femoris, semitendinosus, and semimembranosus. And yes, I'm aware that this should end in US, not IS, but we will choose to look past that. Now here's another cross section of the thigh. Over here we have the medial adductor muscle group in green. Here's our anterior knee extensor, so this would be the quadriceps. And likely over here this isolated muscle is sartorius. And we've got the hamstrings in the back here. Okay, so there's three hamstring muscles, biceps femoris, semitendinosus, and semimembranosus. And yes, I'm aware this should end in a US, not an IS, but we'll choose to look past that. Let's first start by talking about the two muscles here that insert on the tibia. Those are the semitendinosus and semimembranosus. So both of these muscles have an origin on the ischial tuberosity. So in this picture right here, where my mouse is right there, that's the ischial tuberosity. In blue here, this muscle is semitendinosus. You can clearly see it originating off of that. Um, we cannot see the origin of semimembranosus in yellow here. That's because that muscle is deep to semitendinosus, but its origin would be right here behind semitendinosus on that ischial tuberosity. To be a true hamstring muscle, that muscle has to have a proximal attachment or an origin on the ischial tuberosity. You can see here with the short head of biceps femoris, which we'll see in a minute, there's an exception there, and that actually correlates with some other exceptions that we're going to see. Okay, but hamstrings originate off of that ischial tuberosity. Now, if we look at the semitendinosus in blue as we follow it down here, it's going to have this stringy, thin tendon here that goes down the medial aspect of the knee, and this muscle is going to insert on the medial surface of the tibia inferior to the medial condyle of the tibia. Okay, So it's on the medial surface of the tibia. The semimembranosus inserts nearby. It's actually directly on the medial condyle of the tibia. Now the innervation of these two muscles is the sciatic nerve, as we talked about. But the sciatic nerve actually has two parts. It has a tibial portion, and it has a common perineal portion. The semitendinosus and semimembranosus are both innervated by the tibial portion of the sciatic. So um, in some sources, if you look up the innervation, it may just say sciatic nerve. Um, in some cases, it may say tibial part of sciatic nerve. And other sources might actually straight up say tibial nerve. Okay, Again, just understand it's the tibial portion of the sciatic nerve. And the semitendinosus and semimembranosus are both two joint muscles. They cross the knee and they cross the hip by virtue that they originate off of that ischial tuberosity way up here past the hip. And so they're both able to participate in hip extension and knee flexion. They're also able to internally or medially rotate the knee. Now we usually think of the knee as doing flexion and extension, but it does have a little bit of rotational movement allowed. And so we'll talk about that in later videos. But again, medial and internal rotation is facilitated by these two muscles. So those muscles are more medial. The more laterally placed muscle is here in red and also down here in purple, and this is biceps femoris. Now the name biceps should tell you that this is a two-headed muscle, bi for two, sep for head. And the two heads are long and short. 
Now the long head of biceps femoris is the one here in red. This is a true hamstring muscle because it originates off of that proximal attachment, that ischial tuberosity there, and it comes down here distally and it inserts on the head of the fibula. Now the short head of the biceps, which is the purple head right here, also inserts on the head of the fibula. They have the same insertion uh, because actually the muscle bellies fuse distally. Doesn't look like that here, but they do fuse distally and they have the same insertion. But you'll notice the short head of biceps femoris has a different origin. Um, it's short because it doesn't go all the way up to the ischial tuberosity. In fact, it terminates roughly about right there where my mouse is. So again, it's the deeper part of biceps femoris. We can't see it here, but it does not go all the way up to the ischial tuberosity. Rather, it originates here on the linea aspera of the femur. Okay. So that's going to play a role in how many actions the short head's going to have versus the long head. The long head is a two-joint muscle. The short head is only a one-joint muscle. It only crosses the knee. So when we look at biceps femoris collectively, yes, uh, it's involved in hip extension or extending the thigh, and it flexes the leg where it's involved in knee flexion. So when we look at biceps femoris collectively, yes, it's able to perform hip extension, and it's able to perform knee flexion. However, it's really just the long head that's able to extend the hip or extend the thigh because the short head doesn't cross the hip. The short head can only flex the knee, whereas the long head can flex the knee and it can also extend the hip. And that has to do with the fact that the short head of biceps femoris is not a two joint muscle. It also has another correlation here that makes it different. Um, the short head of the biceps femoris being a one joint muscle also happens to have a different innervation slightly. Instead of being the tibial portion of the sciatic nerve, it's the common perineal portion of the sciatic nerve. And then the long head of the biceps femoris follows suit with the other true hamstrings. It's innervated by the tibial portion of the sciatic nerve. So what are the hamstrings good for? Well, they're good for knee flexion, which is what you see here in this video. All four of these, both heads of biceps femoris, semitendinosus and semimembranosus, all participate in knee flexion. What about hip extension? Well, the biceps femoris short head does not participate in hip extension, but all these others do in the chart. And good exercises that you can use to target hip extension would be a good morning, as you see here in the video, or a deadlift, both of which involve hip extension to some extent. Here's another clean look at the hamstring muscle group. Up here at the top at the pelvis, you can see the ischial tuberosity, which provides the origin of all the true hamstring muscles. Laterally, you see this is biceps femoris. This is the long head. And how do I know it's the long head? Well, I just follow the muscle belly up and I see that it originates off of that ischial tuberosity. So this has to be the long head. Uh, the short head is not really so much visible, but it would be uh, kind of right here deep to the long head, and it would only go up right to about here where my mouse is, where it would originate off of that linea aspera. And you can see both heads come down here to this common tendon, and they insert on the head of the fibula. These other two muscles right here are the semitendinosus, which is superficial, and the semimembranosus, which is deep to the semitendinosus. So out here is semimembranosus. Now here is a $1 million question. Why is semitendinosus and semimembranosus named as such? Well, semi means half, okay? And so if we look at semitendinosus, at its distal attachment, this tendon down here, it's very rope-like. It's very tendon-like. Usually when you think of a tendon, we think of a rope, okay? It's a thin tendon right here that goes all the way down um, ultimately onto what we're eventually going to call the pes anserine. If we look at the proximal attachment of semitendinosus, it's not too evident in this picture, but it's not as tendon-like. It's a little more membranous uh, than it is down here. So the way we can think of it is it's membranous up top, tendinous at the bottom. It's semitendinous. If we look at semimembranosus, its distal attachment is very broad. It's not thin and rope-like, so this distal attachment is more membranous, whereas proximally, semimembranosus actually has a thinner origin. Okay, so it's thinner up top, it's membranous at the bottom, so it is semimembranous. And that's where these two names come from. It has to do with the fact that one's tendinous at the bottom, one's membranous at the bottom.
It's also worth mentioning that there's another muscle here that's sometimes grouped with the hamstrings, and that's adductor magnus. And to be fair, it's not the whole muscle adductor magnus. Adductor magnus has two parts. It has an adductor part and it has a hamstring part. There's a component of adductor magnus that originates also on this ischial tuberosity. And so in addition to being able to adduct the hip, it's also able to extend the hip. And so sometimes you'll see the adductor magnus uh, grouped with the hamstring muscles just because it can also function as a hip extensor. And also a component of the adductor magnus, that is the hamstring part, is also innervated by the sciatic nerve. Um, and so when you look at a deadlift, for example, um, not only does this work the glutes and the hamstrings, but it also works the adductor magnus because this muscle, by virtue that it originates off of that ischial tuberosity. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the hamstring muscle group. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.